the overarching goal of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings thematic series entitled Forward Thinking on Clinical Trials and Clinical Practice is to educate the generalist clinician. The series will demonstrate strategic views in this area as a transformative approach to advance clinical trials in clinical practice and to describe both the challenges and opportunities. I'm Bob Jacobson. I'm a professor of pediatrics at Mayo Clinic, and I'm both a researcher and clinician, and I'm co-author of the thematic review entitled Clinical Trials for Special Populations, Children, Older Adults, and Rare Diseases. Hi, I'm Bob Pinolo, and I'm one of the co-authors. I wrote the sections on older adults. Hello, my name is uh, Konstantinos Lazaridis. I'm the executive director for the Center for Individualized Medicine at the Mayo Clinic. My area of expertise and presentation today is about rare diseases. While I conduct clinical trials in pediatric populations as a practicing clinician, I depend upon clinical trials conducted by others in my day-to-day -day care of children. Children are indeed a special population. They are strikingly different from adults. In our review, we describe the four ways one can categorize the challenges children pose to the conduct of clinical trials. These ways are called the four Ds. Children are dependent upon adults in their world. Researchers who would include children in their clinical trials must recruit the parents as well as the children. Children are developmentally vulnerable. They can neither fully comprehend nor take responsibility for consent to the research participation, making them vulnerable. Furthermore, the diseases they suffer manifest differently than the diseases from which adults suffer. Finally, demographically, the children of this country are more diverse ethnically and racially, more likely to live in families that are impoverished, and more likely to live in households where English is not the primary language spoken. All of these differences make the conduct of clinical trials in children more difficult. But there is an imperative to conduct clinical trials to inform the clinical care children need to receive. These imperatives are manifest in the policies of the National Institutes of Health and the Food and Drug Administration. In our review, we discuss the ethical complexities of including this vulnerable population in clinical trials, the federal regulations that direct our institutional review boards across the country to police them, and the guidance that can enable researchers to include children in clinical studies in such a way that the pediatric clinical care can advance and improve. Despite being the fastest growing segment of the population with chronic disease and multimorbidity, older adults are routinely excluded from participation in clinical trials. Among phase three clinical trials conducted between 1965 and 2015 on conditions for which older adults are most likely to be hospitalized, one third had arbitrary exclusion based on age alone. And most subjects included were younger than those usually affected by these medical conditions. Furthermore, older adults with multimorbidity and polypharmacy were routinely excluded from participation in clinical trials, essentially making study results not generalizable to many older patients. Even in recent studies, inclusion of older adults or multimorbid patients remains uh, rather low. In our article, we discuss challenges for inclusion of older adults in clinical trials, ethical conduct of research in these older, vulnerable populations, geriatric-centric clinical trial design, multi-component interventions, recruitment of older adults, research and logistics and regulated care settings, and existing cohorts and biospecimens with accessibility of data and samples to conduct new studies. We conclude that planning and review of clinical trials involving older adults should include evaluation of geriatric-centric design so as not to arbitrarily exclude individuals with coexisting chronic diseases, to assure appropriate functional outcome measures, and to avoid focusing on interventions that target only single disease states. These principles will optimize the generalizability of study, study findings for typical geriatric patients with multiple coexisting conditions support patient preferences involving function and independence, 
acknowledge aging as a major risk factor for multimorbidity, and help to validate therapeutics for age onset conditions, as well as geroscience guided therapies. A review of older adult recruitment plans should include feasibility, methods, venues for recruitment, informed consent with consideration of cognitive status, resident status, that is community versus facility dwelling, and representation of diversity. Involvement of patient groups in study design, accounting for patient and caregiver perspectives, and use of primary care physicians for recruitment and insight can facilitate study retention. Lastly, standardization of clinical trial outcomes for older adults across interventional studies offers advantage, advantages of comparing efficacy and safety findings, establishing benchmarks for assays of target drug engagement, and changes in clinically meaningful endpoints, assuring quality measures associated with reproducibility. Rare diseases are individually rare, but collectively common. And I can say also that rare diseases are not rare for Mayo Clinic practitioners. By definition, rare disease is a disease that affects less than 200,000 patients in the United States. And this definition was introduced back in the 80s in an effort to motivate work in those what we call orphan diseases because they're rare. But collectively, rare diseases affect one in 10 Americans. This means about 30 million Americans have a rare disease. And globally, this number is close to half a billion. Importantly, there are many rare diseases, more than 10,000 these days, and this number will continue to grow. We also know that rare diseases are primarily caused by genetic variations or mutations. But importantly, also, we don't have therapy for those conditions. And most of them, more than 90% of rare diseases, lack therapy at the present time. Rare diseases are also creating an enormous burden on the economy because they cost many billions annually to our health system. In fact, about 400 of those, of the 10,000, cost to the society and to the patients more than a billion annually. And therefore, to develop clinical trials for rare diseases, to find new therapies for those patients, their families, uh, it's extremely important. And in this article, we highlight the opportunities as well as the challenges we're facing as providers to those patients of how can we uh, discover new ways to improve the diagnosis, improve the therapy of those conditions. We realize that rare conditions affect a number of patients across different uh, states, across different areas of the United States, and therefore it's not possible at times to bring all these people together and, under a single center, and therefore many times those are uh, multi-center trials that will serve those patients. At the same time, we realize that uh, in many occasions those patients have not capacity to reach medical centers of expertise to see the appropriate providers uh, to diagnose them with the conditions because uh, rare conditions are not necessarily um, uh, available uh, or diagnosed by other practitioners across the practices because are uncommon encounters. Um, but at the same time, we realize that with the use of internet and the ability to connect electronically, we now have more opportunity to create registries of those patients, collect biospecimens from distance, and being able to pursue uh, studies which were not possible several years ago to make the case that we can identify the causation and we can individualize their uh, treatment options, and so we can be in a position to offer hope and heal healing to those patients. I invite you to read the article. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us 
Our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.